Well, welcome to Coffee with Vern, a time where we enjoy conversation with each other of the truth of scripture, theological truth, and then once a month, we will cover a question segment from your questions sent in to coffeewithvern at gmail.com. Poker Tove, good morning, welcome, good afternoon, or good evening. Welcome, welcome, and welcome. Three times, Jesse. Welcome, always. welcome, welcome. Jesse Moore. Morning, afternoon, evening. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. You look... Somewhat decent in your Georgia Tech pullover? I, I would say awesome in uh, my Georgia Tech pullover. I mean, I like the color. That's the only reason I said somewhat <laughs> decent, you know. But uh, very nice. We are sitting in jackets because it is currently 63 degrees in this room. It is freezing. This leather that my booty is on is frigid. <laughs> um, I can feel it through the jeans. It is cold in here. It's as cold as ice. Yes, very much so. Yeah. Um, I, got, I got some coffee. But wow, it is it is cold. <laughs> and then here's the crazier thing: uh, it's going to be 80 degrees next week. So yes, next thank you, Georgia Tuesday, weather. I'll probably sound like a frog again because I'll probably have another <laughs> sinus infection. Welcome to Georgia. I hate it. Hate the weather. <sighs> Can't enjoy living and breathing in this kind of air. Love walk the scenery. Out. Hate the weather. I mean, walk outside today. 36 degrees. Yeah, that's when when I left the house to go hang out with Jesse Holmes. 36 degrees. Fall or uh, frost all over my mirrors. Now yeah. I don't have fancy mirrors. Do you have fancy mirrors that defrost? No. So I'm getting on the I twenty and I about got plowed <laughs> by an eighteen wheeler. <laughs> Mom, I'm okay. God was providential and protected me. But wow, couldn't see. Stuck my head out the freezing cold window to see like what was back there. So thank the Lord for a good vision mm. and cold air. Yeah. But wow, what a day already. I know. It's is it a special day today? It's election day. It's election day. All that's right. all we're going to say about that. And that's that. That's yeah. it. So moving on to theological matters. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, thought man. we'd talk about that. You were wrong. Wrong. Um, Another podcast. Yeah. That's, Not this one. You can watch Wretched Radio for that. There you go. <clears throat> yep. There's a plug. Wretched Radio, though. He's got some good stuff out. Um, but now what we're going to do today. So it's really depressing, honestly. If we're done with Reformation. Yeah. Month. Sad. I, I mean, we... That was so much fun. We are depressed. Yeah. We had an hour-long episode last week to just finish it off. I mean, that was the cherry with the whipped cream on top of that chocolate milkshake that was just... Oh. It was awesome. If you can't tell, I love chocolate milkshakes. You guys had a Reformation Day party. We had a... Should I roast? You mean... It, that it's cold in here. Just, I could roast. Just do it because I know what you're okay. about to say. Yeah. Uh, we had a Reformation Day party the day after Reformation Day. <sighs> What do I even want to say? I was just a little, I was a little down, you know, I, me and only one other student dressed up, <laughs> but, but they were good. I mean, Anna dressed up as John Calvin. Yeah. It was exceptional. Yeah. So I saw a, the beard, a B very proud of you. Uh, she won the prize. She did, which is an escape outdoors gift card. Won the prize by default, but by still default, won the prize. She, I mean, her Shame. prize was, uh, I mean, her, uh, costume was pretty it epic. Was good. Got a picture of Martin Luther and John Calvin standing together. That's me. I was yeah. dressed up as Martin Luther. Um, yep. <laughs> had my hammer. I mean, that costume fit me way too well because then I had <laughs> yeah. my sockos on. I looked like I had just walked out of 1600s. You did. I it didn't smell like it, but I looked like it. It was impressive. Um, we just it, need to find you that hat. Dude, yes. And I looked at good. like Pinterest, like, could I make one? I was like, no, nah, I'm not crafty. That's not <laughs> happening. That's Jesse Moore. So next year, you're going to help me make yeah. a hat. I'll make you a hat. Next year, you should be your boy, John Knox, since yeah. you got a little Scottish in you. There you go. There you go. Grow that beard <laughs> out. It'd be great. You have to watch out be a, if I have to be like John Knox. Wait, no, you want to be Ulrich, but you can't walk Swingly. around eating sausage. I can't. Yeah, that would be depressing. And vegetarian. So, can't be him. That's okay. I that's, could use vegetarian sausage. That's disgusting. It's not that bad. This whole, all this, like, why would you even call it vegetarian sausage? <laughs> well, honestly, we don't even eat that. Because it's got a lot of chemicals in it, too. <laughs> Phenomenal. So we just don't really eat. I can't do any stuff. of it. I just... Listen, I had... I don't like real sausage. Off topic for a minute. When we went to Disney World this past Christmas, this past December, me and dad tried the... Oh, man, what is it called? It's the vegetarian burger that they have. It's, oh, I, don't, I don't remember what it's called. I don't know what it is. And I took a first bite, and I was like, man, it's pretty good. It's not bad. But each 
each bite, got bite worse. after I was like, this is not a burger. <laughs> this is not good. So I won't be doing that again. Dude, I, nothing in me even wants to try any of that. Well, see, Allison won't eat that because it's processed chemical, oh, all that stuff, gosh. just to make it taste somewhat like a burger. Oh. And I was like, oh, I just want to try it. And it was just, it was no bueno. No. Oh, I stick the chicken fingers. Oh, gosh, that's just painful. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, no, more more props to you, my friend. You're yeah. disciplined and I am not. Yeah. Uh, notice I have laid off the donut sticks. Yes. Good for you. There's, I still buy them for the kids, and occasionally I'll eat one, but yeah. I've laid off. There you go. Um, stepped up to getting real Dunkin' Donuts. There you go. Which are you down know. here. So <laughs> it's still a little bit better, good, right? It's not Good, a better, best. At least know. it's uh, made daily. <laughs> fresh. Fresh somewhat. We can find fresh, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, we'll man. But, so today we're just going to have a conversation. Me and Jesse are just going to kind of talk about life. Uh, we may talk a little bit about what we're reading. Mm. Um, after having a Reformation Month, we, we kind of just need to hang out. Yeah. Because that was, well, let's be honest, lots of history, kind of exhausting in a good way. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was a lot of good stuff. I mean, we, I've already got our names picked out for next October. Yeah. I already got our guys. Yeah. I was like, good. I know which ones we're starting with, you know, good stuff. It was an awesome, uh, awesome, awesome series that we had. But first of all, let's kind of tell the people what we've got coming up. Yeah. Now let's talk a little bit about what we've coming up. So it's November. Is November like a significant month? Well, we got Thanksgiving. You know, yeah. that week we probably won't put out an episode unless you want to. Actually, that would have to be one of those where you call me because I'm going to be out of town. Yeah, I don't James's think I'll. Voice. I don't think I'll be. Hey, here James, for that where either. you at? I'm in Tiger, Georgia, in the mountains. Yeah, I mean, we would have to because what we're we're off. Are you off that Thursday, Tuesday? Friday? No, uh, we're here Tuesday, but. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a short week. I have yeah. to lead music. I think that's I'd have to too. do everything else oof. in that one day. Oof, dee, oof, oof. So, like, we only have a couple episodes yeah. then this month. Yeah. So, with that, we wanted to bring in some special guests. Um, and that's going to start are we next week, hopefully, Lord hopefully, willing. Hopefully, Lord yeah. willing, if the creek don't rise. Yes. Um, I know we'll probably, we could get one for next week. Yeah. If So, let's just talk about our two. So, you go ahead, if you you don't mind talking a little bit about the first one. Yeah, yeah. So, we're, we're going to try and get uh, Jamie Milford on here. Shout out. Because mm-hmm, I know she listens to these. Every episode. <laughs> faithful friend. Yeah. We're going to try and get her on, um, get her on here to yep. talk about her um, foundation, the Victorious Reagan and Friends Foundation. Mm. Um because Reagan, her daughter, had cancer. Um, and I won't talk a lot about that. Um, we'll I want her to her, talk yeah. about it. How um, old is Reagan now? I think she's five. That's what I was going to guess. Mm-hmm. Okay, so she's still young. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Really good friends with my daughter, my eldest daughter, Ellie J. Um, so powerful, powerful story. Um, you know, Reagan's story. And then how through that she started the Victorious Reagan and yeah. Friends Foundation. Um, and what we should do to right, support that right. childhood cancer and stuff like that. So hopefully we'll get her on here. Right. Testimony mm-hmm. as well, you know, just mm-hmm. a powerful testimony. Um, I'm looking forward to that cause I myself don't know Jamie and Ryan very well. Um, and so I'm excited to hear about mm-hmm. a lot of that, but Jamie is a faithful listener. Yes. Uh, she told me she listens to all of our episodes. So shout out. We look forward to having you on here. Um, when I mean, the next guy we're going to try to get on is another faithful listener. None other than Mephibosheth. Yes, David, can't wait. My brother, Nally. <laughs> uh, and so I am looking forward to having old Mephibosheth on here. And what we're going to bring Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth, his name's David. <laughs> <laughs> Just call I, him his name. I never call him David. I'm sorry. <laughs> I never do. Um, but what we're going to have David, brother David, on here for is to talk a little bit about his heart for missions. Mm-hmm. Um, I've gotten to go to Utah and West Virginia with David. Uh, he is. Um, a big missions guy. And so we're going to have an episode dedicated to missions and hearing a little bit of his story and his life. Uh, we will definitely have a lot of laughs that episode. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Um, a lot of coffee and a lot of laughs. Uh, I've known David for a long time, but we became like brothers, like on that trip, the brothers in Utah, because I had never flown. So I sat with David the whole way. You had never flown. I had never before? flown. And Dude. so he took care of me. He, he told me it's going to be okay. And it was, but he took care of me that trip. He's like my dad. We hung out together, me, him and Todd Basinger, everywhere we went, we hung out. (laughs) But uh, our little tradition while we were in Utah for those, I think it was 10 days. I can't remember. Uh, But we 
we make coffee every morning. And that's where Mephibosheth comes from. I don't know why we pulled that out, but we called it the Mephibosheth brew. And dude, when we make coffee, so the Mormons, Mm -hmm. they are not coffee drinkers. Interesting. So there was no coffee pots. If you buy an Airbnb out there, there's not going to be a coffee pot probably in the house. But they had a French press because they make a lot of tea. (laughs) Some of them do decaffeinated tea and stuff like that. A lot of them don't drink caffeine. That's and so we're like, well, we got to have some coffee. There's yeah. some Georgia kids out here <laughs> about to go walking around. And so they had a French oh, press, but we made a French press and it was, there was always like dirt. Like it looked like dirt soot at the bottom of that joker. I mean, we were drinking the hard stuff. Wow. So the Mephiba Chef Brew, one of the best trips of my life, but we're going to have brother David up here. Yeah. Uh, he is a faithful listener. Yes. Faithful friend. Um, he's like a father, but also like a bro, like he'd be my college roommate hundred <laughs> percent. And so looking That's forward to that. That's a great way to describe it. Uh, oh, hundred percent. Oh my and so, goodness. uh, can't wait to have both of them on here. Yeah. Two great testimonies, two different yeah. stories. Um, but two people who are faithful to listening to this, but also faithful to our church. And so I'm yeah. looking forward to that. Oh man, that's going to be fun. Well, today let's kind of just conversate. Because I think that's all we're going to have is these three episodes in this month. Yeah. I really do. I think mm-hmm. that's it. Um, December, we'll, I, I got an idea for December. We'll save that. Save that. But one last spoiler. One last one. We are going to have a month called Puritan Month. Yes. Yes, we are. And are we going to make a Puritan t-shirt? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I don't know what Puritan we're going to put on it. As many t-shirts as we can make, I we mean, will. you desire them, we will design them. Hey, there That's we our slogan. Go. Coffee with Vern t-shirt company. You <laughs> desire them, we will design them. I mean, we're we're season one, two shirts in. <laughs> so. <laughs> Can we get three? That's the question. Oh, my gosh. Well, we are going to have periods of month, but yes. today what we're going to do is we're just going to conversate. And so let's kind of just kick it off, right? So we Reformation Month, coming out of Reformation Month, we have a lot of really good stuff that we've been kind of applying to our lives. Um And we could talk about that as much as we want, but because we spent a whole month dedicated to that, we're going to turn the page and we're talking a little bit about what we're personally reading. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we've got sitting right here. Um, And then we're just going to close out and kind of send you on your, your month, this new month and just kind of pray for y'all. But just a laid back day, I think, and this is the last thing I'll say about today. Today is a day where a lot of people are worried. Yeah. A lot of people are anxious maybe depressed, scared. And so with that, we want to have a lighthearted conversation yeah. so that you can remember, hey, God's in control at the end yeah. of the day. And so we just want to have some fun. And so with that, I'm going to turn it to you first because you're reading yes. a hefty book. Yes, I am. I'm, Share with the people. And I I had borrowed it from you months ago. Months ago, yeah. And I didn't really do anything with it. But then once uh, I finished it, the last book I was reading um, and we had talked about, we were doing, we were going to do Puritan month. I was like, let me, let me read Pilgrim's progress. Uh, John Bunyan classic classic. It (laughs) read it. No, but I do own it. It is half D and and you have to get used to the old English. There's some stuff in here like Bunyan. He's not, he's not veiling who he's talking about. Like some of his, some of his applications and his meanings, uh, and what he's trying to get across, sometimes you have to sit and work on that a while. But the, the names of the characters are in here, are like jealousy and hopeful and yeah, little hard and Christian. All that stuff. Yeah. And so, um, an old giant who can't do anything, his name is Pope. I mean, he's not trying to veil no. anything, but you, some of the words, I'm like, okay, what did that mean back then? Right. <laughs> so it, it is such a good book, and it has ministered to me. I'm about halfway done. Um, I'm at the end of Christian's journey, and then we're going to get into his wife because he had to leave his wife behind. And we're about to get in Christiana. John journey. Bunyan did have to leave his wife behind. He's locked up in prison for about 11, 11 years. years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What has been your favorite part of this book? Now, I'll tell you that, and I've told you this, there are, there are days, it's taken me longer to read this than most books because there are yeah. just some times where you have to read sections of his book and then just put it down. That's right. And then just chew on it and pray on it because it's, you, you could just feel what he's trying to get across and you can feel like the spiritual weight of it. And the one that I sat on for like <laughs> two days 
and it made me weep like a baby Ooh. was um, it was after Christian had his burden taken away by the Prince of the Hill, which is Jesus mm-hmm. on the Hill of Calvary. Again, oh, yeah. he's not veiling That's right. his meanings, uh, which is good because this is read by that's Not the, Christians and Christians alike. Fun fact, second most read and bought yeah, book absolutely. ever. Told yeah. progress. So good thing that he's not veiling because right. non-Christians can see what he's talking about. Right, he can minister, yeah. Yeah, and so he goes through, you know, a few more things. Not not too bad. And he makes it to a house called Beautiful um, where he can take a little bit of a rest. And they talk to him for a few days and show him some wonders for a few days and... Then they send him on his way, and before they send him on his way, they give him armor, um, the armor of God. Yeah, Ephesians 6. So right? they... I hope that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll just leave it. Keep if going. If not, I'll post it on the <laughs> video. Keep going. So um, they send him on the, his way, and he they tell him, you know, be ready. You're going down into the valley mm-hmm. of hum- humiliation before... You get to the valley of the shadow of death. Oh gosh! So two trials, one right after the, the valley, next. This sounds like the valley of vision, which is the Puritan prayers. Through right. the valley is where I find my vision. Correct. Oh, so you know, so he gets to the valley of humiliation, uh-huh. which again is not veiled by what he means by this. Right. And so while he's walking through, he sees a far distance off Apollyon, which you have three beings. Basically hunting him, uh, okay. Apollyon, Beelzebub, and Legion. And those those are names of demons, right? Ultimately, Beelzebub is one of the names of the demons, right? Yeah. And so basically, and he says, um, uh, Apollyon basically says, "Why have you left my city? I am the prince of your city. You are one of my subjects. Um, I will not so easily lose one of my subjects, right?" And so he has this conversation with Apollyon. And Apollyon's trying to tell him, you know, no, it's okay. I'll forgive you. Go back. And he's like, no, I'm not going to do that. And he's standing strong. He's nervous. Right. Um, And he even thought about going back, but he fought against that. And, you know, he he keeps saying no. And Apollyon's like, okay, well, I heard you were, you know, not happy with the wages and how things were going. So you come back with me and, you know, I will greatly increase your wage and your workload, make your family happy, you know, all Mm -hmm. this stuff. Just come back with me. And then he says no, and then he tries to tell him, well, you won't be accepted where you're going to the celestial city either because of all the downfalls that you've had. And he lists them out, everything that he's done. Mm -hmm. And Christian, he says, well, you forgot some, some sins that I have done. But even so, does the prince of this land yeah. Forgive me, and all this stuff, and so that just enrages Apollyon, and they fight for half a day. And man, it's going to be hard to even talk about this. He Apollyon eventually wrestles him to the ground, and Apollyon said, "I am sure of thee now." And with that, he had almost pressed him to death, so that Christian began to despair of life. But as God would have it, while Apollyon was fetching his last blow, thereby to make a full end of this good man. Christian nimbly reached out his hand for the sword, caught it, saying, Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. And with that gave him a deadly thrust, which made him give back as one who had received a mortal wound. Christian perceived that, made Adam again, saying, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And with that, Apollyon spread forth his wings and sped away. Romans 8. And man, when I read that, I mean, I I put it down, and I cried. I was like, "Oh Romans eight. my gosh!" My man John Bunyan put Romans eight in that book. It was so. I mean, and there have been a couple of more instances like that, but yeah, that one. And, and then after that, it was that's rich, dude. I'm gonna have yeah. to. I'm looking forward to this class I'm in being done because I got a list of books I'm trying to read before yeah. the new year. And that's actually at one of them. Oh, yeah, it was. I have to Whew. get a prep before I get into it from you. Yeah. That one's going to beat me up. Well, see, I had to switch this one out. This is the Wordsworth classic version. The other one that I had from you was like his first edition, which is like Stupid legitimate hard. old English. Yeah, and so, so this one is still ones. like old English, 
But the other one was like, I, I have no clue what he's saying. <laughs> yeah, so I've been working through the Puritan paperbacks occasionally, and they're yeah. like, they didn't change it up. Mm-hmm. It's, it's stupid old English. Yeah, it's like, what in the world? What did you just say? Can you translate that? Even yeah. though it's English, like, can yeah. you translate it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there, there's so much meaty stuff, and honestly, it's applying to a lot of what's going on in my life right now, just a lot of parallels. That, and I'm in, Psalm, in the Psalms mm-hmm. uh, personally, so... I mean, man, it those two together just so have been ministering mm. to me this month. And that, I mean, and isn't that month. cool how God does that though? It's amazing. He there was at the time you're like, yeah, I'll get this book when I get to it. But there's a reason why the Lord it, kept you from getting into it. Correct, absolutely. And it was perfect time and perfect season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that was me with gentle and lowly when I read that. When I read that, it was like okay, perfect time of the year. It was right when we were opening back up. Yeah. And I just, I felt like I'd just been beaten up through the COVID stuff. Well, good. That's good. Yeah, man. Hopefully, you know, hey, if you need a copy of John Bunyan's Pilgrim Progress, don't come borrow the really, really rough (laughs) English one that I have. Pick you up a good copy. It's a pretty cheap book, too. There's so many different, like he said, there's so many different translations in the sense of um, versions. Yeah. You can get you a good copy. I know on christianbook.com they have it for like three bucks. Yeah. So get you a copy. Great book. I'm looking forward to getting into it. Um, I actually, this year was when I purchased it. Like I, it was one that I had never had. And hmm. that's like, well, there you go. You call yourself a pastor. And you don't have to. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys. Um, okay. I have all the books nobody cares about like these. Uh, anyways, so I'll talk a little bit about where I'm at um, and then we can kind of close out. I reckon, you know, I'm, I'm kind of everywhere right now. I'm in a class called missiology. And so I'm having to read a lot for that class. And that class has been really excruciating on me in the sense <laughs> of uh, it is actually, so the study of missions is what it stands for. And missions, I know a decent amount about missions, but mm-hmm. this is like, okay, processes, people that have made it what it is today, the right. history behind it. And I'm like, okay, this is all brand new to me. Whereas some of these classes I've been in seminary, I took in college. And so I've been able to have like a gist of, I know what we're going to be talking about, right? I can read through it and grasp it the first time. So it's been challenging. And so my reading has had to kind of be everywhere. Mm. Unfortunately, you know how I am. I love to read. Yes. Um, And so I love to read different books at the same time. And so what's been really difficult uh, has been having to read one book one day and not come to it for another week, which is not like me. Usually I can read two books and read a chapter each day uh, just because I love to read that much. And once it, students or anyone, once you fall in love with reading, you'll see yourself doing that. Mm-hmm. It's not because James is just good at it. It's just, you love it. Yes. Uh, but I've been reading this systematic theology since January and I am, I'm on page like 600 and something. I'm trying to work through the whole book and because of school, it slowed me down. Uh, I just finished up the chapter about the name of the Lord Yahweh, which has been really cool because we talked about that in the uh, with the students on Sunday nights. But what I am reading now is I was like, you know what? I need to pick up something that might be a little bit easier. Joke's on me. <laughs> um, I picked up a book called Remember Death. Oh, yeah. By mm-hmm. Andrew McCulloch, I think is his last name, or McGulloch, something like that. I think it's McCulloch. Wow. I was like, Psh, it'd be easier book to read. It's a, it's a Christian life book. And typically for me in my, the way I can function Christian life books, which are like spiritual discipline books are a little bit easier for me to read than like a, a theology. Yeah. You, I mean, of course you think that, right? You would. Yeah. So I'm reading this book and I'm like, I'm in it and I'm, I read the introduction. It's one of those, you got to read the introduction Read the intro got into chapter one. It was just like, whoa, okay, this is worse than gentle and lowly. This is heavy. Okay, it's just like shot, shot, shot. And I'm like, man. And so what's the concept of the book? I tell you, today in the American church and in American Christianity, the reason I say American Christianity is this is not seen outside of here. Right. I mean, uh, Andrew talks about that. I think his name is Andrew. I don't want to give wrong credit, but he talks about that. The writer talks about that and how... um, in American Christianity, we look at death as almost that we we will never experience it. Mm. If you know what I'm kind of getting at with that, we yeah we we live as though we're just going to ignore yeah. death. And there's a term for that, and I can't remember what he deems it, but 
that we we don't think about death until we have to is mm. pre- essentially is his gr- is his ground for that is yeah. death is something we push as far as far away as we can until it's right in front of us yeah um, and what is the problem with that is where he dives at mm. and so the book is remember death because in Ecclesiastes is where he roots a lot of this and it's really good I mean he pretty much just exegetes Ecclesiastes in chapter two. Um, Solomon, the wisest man who we believe wrote Ecclesiastes, speaks of death and to number your days and the wisdom in that, right? Because right, when I hear number your days, if I know how many days I have left to live and I don't, but if I think in that mindset, it means I'm going to live every day to the fullest. Right Now, how do we apply that as a Christian every day to the fullest as a believer, as a believer. serving mm-hmm. God? Absolutely. I'm not going to take any minute for granted. And so I'm going to get somewhere with this. It's going to come circle around back to what we talked about with John Calvin and his exhaustion for the ministry. But essentially he keeps going and pushing forward that medicine of today has extended death or it's extended life to where death is not something we have to think about. You can be on life support for a while, mm-hmm. really for a long, long time. Medicine has pushed life to be longer. You can suffer longer through, whereas Okay, Charles Spurgeon died of kidney failure. Kidney failure now, what do you do? You have dialysis. Yeah. And you have things like that, which praise be to God for that. Right. But like Charles Spurgeon died when he's 57. Right. You know, a great man of the the word or the Lord just Yeah, but what is extended life if we don't use it to what its purpose is to be? And that's what he gets at. And yeah. so what is the point of remembering death? The point is to remember that death is there. Mhm. Uh, but to also remember that Christ has conquered death because mm-hmm. right? we don't remember that either. We go, Oh, Oh death. I don't want to leave my family. I don't want to leave what I've done. Yeah. That, and that is basically Christians. He gets on that pilgrimage too. is his whole pilgrimage. There may be a handful of times where he has time to rest mm. or times of peace. Yeah. And the entire time he's on his, on the way. Yeah. Um, he has to think about, well, I might face danger this next corner mm-hmm. or I might even die. There's at one point he loses his companion at one point. Yeah. He's, his companion's name was Faithful and he was burned at the stake. That's right. You told me that. Yeah. I and thought it was a reference like John Huss or something. Maybe. The goose. But he was, uh, he was burned at the stake and he knew, they knew it was coming. They didn't know which one of them it was going to be, but there's a man that helps them along called Evangelist. And, uh, it's amazing. Yeah. And so he tells them before they get to this town, um, that blood is going to be shed on your, on your path. And it's either going to be Christian or, pil- mm-hmm. or, uh, right. or, or faithful. Right. And he said, now you, that might worry you. He said, but there are pros and cons to both. He said, so you may have to suffer and be tortured and be killed in a terrible way but you get to go to the celestial city before your companion. Wow. And he said, so even though you face death, recognize what joy you're going to have before your other. Oh, death, where is your sting? Mm -hmm. You know, Oh, death, where is your victory? Yep. Cause it doesn't have it ultimately. Mm -hmm. And so that, that leads right back into what, um, McCulloch is talking about with this book. It's just as a believer, we need to live in the realization of death is real. Right. Right. And recognize that it's there. Recognize that death ultimately is a consequence of sin. Right. But ultimately, Jesus has defeated it. Right. And so for death, for us, it is stepping into the next life. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need to be respectful for, of it, but we don't need to fear mm-hmm. it. Um, and I, this book is so good. I recommend it for any of you heavy thinkers. I recommend it. Um, it is a challenging book. Students, if you pick it up, you need to be careful. It is tough. Mm. I mean, it has left me like Jesse was talking about and weeping. This one has not left me weeping. It's left me going, Lord, wow. Yeah. Wow. So, and it's so, it's so good. But well, how do I take that and apply that to today? So what I'm reading is it makes me, okay, let's think of Solomon um, to number your days. I'm telling you, man, well, I, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about something that's been bugging me lately. I, I'm just going to for a second and then we'll close because it's now 70 something degrees in here. I'm burning up in the sheep cloth, whatever this is. <laughs> got this on a like 80% off discount. So what I'm talking about is the only reason I got it it's so hot now. It is. Lord, I'm getting, I'm getting fired up. That's what it is. <laughs> but, uh, you know, one of my biggest, what's 
pet peeve. That's there what, you go. One of my greatest pet peeves Get into it. of ministry is, is this phrase. Here we go. I'm going to verbatim say it. Okay. Don't exhaust yourself. You, you're young. <laughs> you're going to be 35 and turn around and have four kids and you're just going to be tired and you're not going to know what happened with your life if you're not careful. And I'm just like... And, and my family supports me everything. So this is not... A, my family, this is not right, to them. Right, 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 right. But I'm like... I, I just have to stand there. I'm like, did you really just tell me that? Yeah. Or... Hey, once you get married, you're going to have to slow down. I'm like, have you met my girlfriend? Because I hope this is, uh, and honey, if this is not how you think, hopefully this will convict you. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm sure she does. Uh, but I know this is how she thinks, but she's just going to partner in with me. Yeah. Right. You know, and for, for my life, the Lord called me to ministry in fourth grade. There's no doubt. I knew that third or fourth grade. I remember the Lord called me into ministry and I was like, that's what I want to do the rest of my life. And so let me exhaust every ounce that I have. Mm -hmm. Because when I see the Lord face to face, I want to say, Jesus, I gave it all. Yeah. I, it, everything I could for you, because guess what you did for me? You sacrificed it all. Yeah. Why would I give God 50%? Yeah. Well, like, what does that say about me? Um, and so, you know, it, it's just, I, I, this book has been really convicting. The Reformation Month it was really convicting over me because mm -hmm. these guys, there was not a day they were not in scriptures. Right. And oh, yeah. wow, we only tease that at what, 10 minutes? We're like, oh, got my, I'm done for the day. I'm like, oh, yeah, as these guys translated. Do you know how long it took Martin Luther to translate? The, did you hear this? Uh -uh. The New Testament? 10 months. <laughs> no, 10 weeks. It was 10 weeks. 10 weeks to translate the New Testament. Wow. And so with that, what do we say? Exhaust yourself for the ministry. So I say. <laughs> But, hey, uh, we've got good stuff coming. I'm excited for the weeks to come. Mm -hmm. uh, looking forward to Jamie. Looking forward to David. Um, why did I set these books out? Because the, the, here's some things I'm thinking about bringing up on Coffee with Vern. They're sitting there to stew over. Well, yes. you got to tell what it is for historical those Historical theology. There all right, know. so what's historical theology? It's all the theological views of people in church history. We have Christian theology, which is just another systematic, and then Wayne Grudem's classic systematic. If you know me, you know I love systematic theology. But we're going to start talking about some meaty things. Meaty. Uh, the nitty gritty. Meaty gritty. The nitty gritty. So, hey, this episode's been brought to you by Ubora and my, my barista. But Morgan. not really brought to you by. Not really. I wish it was. but We are not endorsed. I'm, unfortunately. But I do love <laughs> Ubora. Go support my people. Um, and we will see you next week. So, hey, have a great day. Before you go, Shabbat Shalom. Go in peace, mm. but also know that the Lord is sovereign. We'll see you next week.